Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the candidate forum for Ramsey County Commissioner, District 3. My name is Susan Johnson, and I will be your moderator this evening. This evening's forum is organized by the League of Women Voters of St. Paul in partnership with the St. Paul Neighborhood Network, SPNN. Our thanks to SPNN for the use of their studio space as well as for the people that are here working to film this event. The League of Women Voters, St. Paul, conducts candidate forums to enable the voting public to hear from candidates on key issues that touch their lives so that they can make informed decisions at the polls. The League is a nonpartisan organization that does not support or oppose any specific political party or candidate. The views expressed in each forum are those of the candidates, not those of the League of Women Voters or SPNN. Following the forums, League of Women Voters Minnesota and our local league chapters will post the complete, unedited recordings to YouTube and the league's website. Editing is authorized only for official media reporting. Excerpts or edited clips of candidate forums may not be used for partisan or other political purposes. The Ramsey County Board of Commissioners governs Ramsey County. The board establishes county policy, passes laws and resolutions, appoints boards, commissions, and officials, makes purchases, and provides oversight of its budget and operations. County government provides a wide range of services to residents, such as property tax collection, emergency services, voter registration and election services, and child support and protection. The county also provides other services not required by the state, such as libraries, park and recreation programs, and solid waste management. This is only a sample of what county commissioners are responsible for. As you can see, county government impacts many aspects of our day-to-day -day life, yet it is much less visible and understood than other levels of government. You may all have noticed that there are cards on your chairs. These cards are for writing down questions for the candidates to answer. Once you have a question, please hold it up and one of our volunteers will come and pick it up from you. Without further ado, let me introduce the candidates for Ramsey County Commissioner for District 3. But I will note before I introduce them that this is a special election because the seat was vacated by the commissioner who was holding that seat. Consequently, um, it is a little different than the other offices that are on your ballot this year. So the two candidates that we have, first of all, I have Garrison McMurtry, and then I have Joshua David Bow. Thank you both for being here very much. The candidates participating in today's forum have all agreed to forum rules which were provided to them earlier. They include, firstly, the campaign materials, including buttons, signs, literature, and clothing, are not allowed in the studio. But you can find candidate materials on the tables in the lobby. Once this forum is done, please feel free to look at all those materials. Each candidate will give a two-minute introductory statement. The candidates will have one minute to answer each question and 30 seconds for a rebuttal if they so choose a maximum of three rebuttals per candidate. A timer will signal them when they have 15 seconds remaining and when their time is up. The timers are sitting in the front row. They have cards that they will show you. We will accept written questions throughout the forum. Questions submitted by the audience must be applicable to all candidates, nonpartisan in nature, and must be to topics that are relevant to the office. If you have a question, please write it on your card, then hold it up so one of our volunteers can collect it. Questions that are of a personal nature, embarrassing, hostile, or unclear in intent will not be asked. Similar questions may be consolidated and or edited for clarity or brevity. 
Please remain as quiet as possible so that everyone can hear. Please hold your applause until the forum has ended so that candidates will have as much time as possible to answer your questions. Please place your cell phones on silent. Members of the media may be recording this forum for their own use. The forum is also being recorded by the St. Paul Neighborhood Network for viewing by the public. We ask that members of the public not make their own recordings or take photos of the forum while it is in progress. With that, we will start with opening statements. Each candidate has two minutes for an opening statement. And with that, we will begin with Mr. McMurtry. Awesome, thank you so much. I wanna start by thanking the League of Women Voters for uh, putting this together and allowing us a chance to share our vision for the community. Uh, my name is Garrison McMurtry. I'm proud to be the DFL and labor endorsed candidate for Ramsey County Commissioner here in District 3. Uh, my wife and I live in the Como Park neighborhood. Uh, and my journey to this moment actually started back in Mississippi where I was born and raised by my mother, my grandmother, and my aunt. Uh, all three of them in their own special way made me who I am today and uh, taught me the importance of doing my part to make my community just a little bit better uh, than it was the day before. Uh, and so growing up in Mississippi, I got a chance to see firsthand just the impact of government or the lack thereof has on communities, especially communities that look like mine. And so we grew up in a housing project. I relied on different services like WIC and SNAP. And when there were not any investments or even an awareness of the different services and programs that our local government provided, my family felt that impact directly. And so I'm in this race because I want to center economic justice at everything that we're doing at the county. And what I mean by that is whether it's workforce development or housing or transportation, all of it funnels into the economic vitality of our community. And I think it's important for us as a county to be bold, to be strategic, to be laser focused on addressing the issues and the disparities that currently exist. And so I think that over the course of my career, whether it was working in Senator Klobuchar's office, doing stakeholder engagement work at Target, or even in my current role as the district director for Congresswoman Angie Craig, all of it prepares me to take on a role like this. And I'm excited about the prospects of not only being on the board, but to center uh, the economic justice that we need and ensuring that we're building a community for future generations. Thank you so much for having me this evening. Thank you. Next, we will go to Mr. Bell. Uh, hello, thank you all for having me here tonight. Um, the reason I'm running for this board is because my story kind of starts in this in the St. Paul way before I was born. My great -grandm grandmother immigrated here from what is now Germany, but wasn't Germany at the time. My grandmother grew up in this neighborhood. My mother and sisters grew up in this neighborhood. I grew up in a small farm in the middle of nowhere. And as soon as I was able to leave that small town, I moved back to St. Paul. Um, and I've been here ever since. And I've lived on the east side of St. Paul specifically since 2012 with my wife and our three cats. Um, feel free to make any jokes about that you'd like. Um, we have been using um, public transit, which so many more people would use if it was safer. Um, so that's something that I would like to focus on is getting public transit. I mean, because we already have the infrastructure in place and we spent so much money on these projects and it seems like not very many people use them. Um, I, I used it for seven years when I first got to the Twin Cities, and I, I still use it, but I still spend most of my time walking around St. Paul, because um, I think that's the best way to see the world. And I know it's safe for me, because I'm a large, I'm a pretty big guy, and it's not safe for everybody. It'd be nice if it was safe for everybody to do that, or at least people felt safe enough to do that. Well, that's a little louder. <laughs> um, so what I, wanted, what I would focus on, since I work in the nonprofit sector, I've been in the nonprofit sector for about eight years, uh, the last six of them with Merritt Community Services, who's been on the east side of St. Paul since 1908. Um, I run the food shelf, I'm the food shelf manager, and help with the Meals on Wheels program. Um, and getting to know all these community partnerships and all the partnerships I already have, I'd like to bring them together to make St. Paul a safer, uh, greener, and cleaner place to live. Okay, the first question that came from our constituency regards general governance. This question will be addressed to Mr. Bao to begin with. How will you ensure that the community is engaged in the work that the county leads? What advice can you give to citizens about how and when to get involved in an issue that is of concern? Um, so I've done, dealt with this before. We, after the pandemic, we switched our food shelf from being completely uh, drive-through to half drive-through, half in-person shopping. 
because uh, the, we asked the community what they wanted, and they were split almost 50-50, and that's what they did want. So getting out into the community to engage people and ask them they, what they actually want um, is important, and it's doable. It's not, it's not, it doesn't take you know, um, a whole room full of politicians to figure it out. Um, getting into the community is important. And now you, Mr. McMurtry, again, general governance. How will you ensure that the community is engaged in the work that the county leads? What advice can you give to citizens about how and when to get involved in an issue that is of concern? Absolutely, yeah. Community engagement is something that's really important to me and has really been uh, at the forefront of all the work that I've done throughout the course of my career. Uh, when I served in uh, Senator Klobuchar's office, I was an outreach director, uh, and even in my current role in Congresswoman Craig's office, all of it centers around getting out and meeting with folks, understanding what their issues are, but also sharing what the, the priorities and what the plans are that we have as a county. I think that uh, for a county, uh, what we need to focus on is not only going to where people are currently at and making sure we're meeting them on their own terms, uh, and in their own environment, uh, but it's also impor for, important for us to leverage the relationships of some key stakeholders, whether it's faith-based communities or nonprofits who have those built-in relationships for us to get in and, and to share the story of the work that we're doing uh, and hope that folks want to get more engaged uh, through those relationships that they already have with those different entities. Okay, now this question will be for you, Mr. Garrison. Um, very specific question that came from our audience. Street maintenance, are there areas in the county where county roads should be transferred to the cities they serve, and what is the benefit of the county owning and managing streets rather than the city owning the streets? Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that street maintenance is important to the work of the county. I do believe that uh, the work of the county when it comes to, to street maintenance should uh, really complement the work that the city is doing so it's not all on, uh, on the backs of, of our city uh, uh, services to, to do that. I think that when we're looking at, at our streets, one great opportunity that's within our county is on Rice Street, which is a county, uh, county street. Uh, and next year, we're going to see tremendous uh, revitalization when it comes to the infrastructure of, of Rice Street, uh, where it's going going to go from a three to four conversion, which provides an opportunity for more uh, uh, bicycling from, for pedestrians, for drivers to be safe, and for bus rapid transit. And I think that's an important investment that the county should be taking uh, a role in uh, and, and work in collaboration with our city officials as well. And Mr. Bow? <clears throat> um, so street maintenance adjacent, that's part of what I mean by a cleaner St. Paul. Um, but snow removal. Um, so where I live, snow removal affects me incredibly because we don't, we live on Maryland Avenue, so we don't actually have any place to park in front of our house. We have to park behind in the alley. And the city does not plow any alleys. Um, that's something that, I mean, I've heard all of my neighbors complain about over and over again. Um, but it, it's important for us to figure out how to get this done. We, we have snow most of the year. We should be able to figure this out. Um, that brings up the question of working with other entities. St. Paul has streets that are in Ramsey County that they're responsible for, whereas Ramsey County has streets in St. Paul that they're responsible for. And that doesn't even get into the state highways. So there are multiple layers of government responsible for street maintenance. How do you as a Ramsey County commissioner work with other entities to make sure that people can park and can drive in their own home neighborhoods. Sorry for me. Yes. Great. Uh, I, I think it's so important uh, since there is so much overlapping that we're seeing with uh, with streets, whether it's county or street or state, uh, for us to, as a county, be working in collaboration with these different partners, uh, whether it's the city or this or the state. And that's something uh, that I would plan to do uh, as county commissioner uh, to ensure that I am in steady communication uh, with the city and with the state on the needs of of, uh, of our county roads to make sure that uh, we are keeping those up, up keeping the, the county roads to be in, in good condition for all the folks who are, who are using it. Uh, I think having those type of relationships uh, will be important to make sure that there's more collaboration between uh, both the, the county and, and the state and, and with the city. Mr. Bow? I would start with talking to the people who are doing the maintenance and doing the removal to see how things work at their level. Because a lot of times with the administrative work that gets lost, where people don't have that hands-on experience to see what it looks like to actually have to do these jobs. Um, so I, I would start there and figure out a way to collaborate with getting those people who 
are in charge of the funds to the actual sites where the funds are being spent to see what's going on. Okay, Mr. Bow, the next question I'm going to ask is also about transportation. Uh, more specific question, rethinking I-94 Rondo. What is your position on rethinking I-94 process led by the Minnesota Department of Transportation, particularly regarding the idea of converting the corridor back to a boulevard or a street grid like it was before the Rondo neighborhood was displaced? <clears throat> I think that's something that we should definitely pursue. Um, there's so much injustice with the Rondo neighborhood just being destroyed. Um, it, something has to be done to make that more equitable and fair for everybody, because it was a very, very vibrant neighborhood. And if someone put one of those through the middle of Woodbury right now, there'd be something, someone would say something about it, do something about it. Mr. McMurtry? Yeah, I feel like there is a, a tremendous opportunity when it comes to rethinking on 94. We all uh, know the history of the Rondo community, a historic black community that was divided and completely decimated by uh, the construction of I-94. I like the idea of having the, the boulevard and want to have uh, conversations uh, with many partners to, to see exactly what that looks like. But the benefits of having a, a boulevard will ensure that we are incorporating multimodal forms of transportation along uh, that corridor. It ensures that we are, are protecting protecting our environment and taking steps to really improve our environment. And the last piece, which is most important, is that we're going to be uh, ensuring that we are, are adhering to the needs uh, of the people who live along that corridor, an opportunity for us of providing more affordable housing, an opportunity for us to have uh, more businesses and retail along that corridor if we went the route of, of a boulevard. So it's definitely something that I would be uh, in favor of, of discussing more and, and working closely with partners and MnDOT to do so. Next question, how do you work with people that disagree with your ideas and your policy positions? Yeah, I, I have, uh, throughout the course of my career, I've had a lot of experience of, of working with folks uh, who didn't always agree with me on, on different topics. Uh, what I think is important is for us to ensure that we are communicating and setting expectations with folks. Uh, throughout the course of my career, I've had an opportunity to build relationships with stakeholders. And what's key to those relationships is communicating and expressing exactly what our ideas are and how we can po possibly work together. Uh, and one thing that I would want to do uh, as county commissioners ensure that we're having those conversations, but folks understand uh, where we come from as a county and we also get back from them uh, what their needs and what their expectations are. Um, I think it's, it's crucial that, that we have a clear understanding of, of who each other are, but also understand that we're gonna hear each other out uh, and hopefully work together for, uh, 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 for a solution that benefits the public good. Mr. Bell? <clears throat> I mean, intentional listening, making sure that we understand where each other are coming from. Um, having spirited debate about things we disagree about it doesn't have to come down to name calling, slinging arrows at each other. And we can find solutions together to work on these things. I work with um, some tribal communities, and they have some very interesting things to say about uh, the land we stand on and how we talk about it. And those are hard conversations for most people to have, but they're important conversations to have. So I think we need to continue to have them. Mr. Bow, the next question I'll ask is a fiscal question. Budgeting. How do you propose to address spending and identify budget cuts that won't affect our quality of life? That is a good question. <laughs> um, finding out where we're, we're supposed to be accountable for the money that we allocate and budget. So finding out ways where places that we're spending in maybe the wrong ways. So some of the some of the things we've done to the light rail, for example, it's gonna be $18 billion in debt in the next 20 years. Um, if people actually used it, uh, we, I think it would almost be self-sustaining, but so few people use it that it's difficult to do. So how do we reallocate some funds and not just use uh, certain funds when emergencies happen? Mr. McMurtry? Yeah, when it, when it comes to our budget, I, I think that First and foremost, I would want to have conversations with not only the county manager, but also the different department heads to really understand uh, what their needs are uh, and, and how we can meet them with our budget. One thing that's important for us, uh, I think, as a county is to ensure that we're diversifying our revenue stream as a county so that we're not relying heavily on just property taxes and a property levy uh, to get the resources that we need. So one of the things that I would want to do as county commissioner is work closely with organizations like
like Greater MSP to see how can we ensure that we're bringing in new businesses? How can we ensure we're bringing in new uh, streams of revenue uh, to take that burden off of the backs of property, property taxes? Okay, well, the next question that came from our audience is about taxes. And right now, the budget for the Ramsey County, um, Ramsey County as a whole, relies almost 50% on property tax. Increased property taxes are a challenge for many families. What will you do to help keep property tax increases affordable? Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a continuation of, of what I, I mentioned. I, I think that we have to uh, prioritize uh, uh, diversifying our revenue stream as a county. Uh, and so when I look at opportunities for, for the county, I'm, I'm thinking specifically of St. Paul, of St. Paul, downtown St. Paul, uh, and how we can work closely with the state, work closely with the city, work closely with uh, business leaders to, to figure out ways of, of bringing in uh, more revenue and more businesses uh, downtown. I think that there's a, a tremendous opportunity there, and particular as we're thinking about the, the future and what we want to see in our community as a future, I think there's an opportunity for us to be recruiting different in-demand industries, whether it's tech or manufacturing or, or, uh, or healthcare, uh, to bring in more revenue uh, into our community to bring down uh, and, and help uh, better balance those uh, property taxes and the, and the impact that it's having on, on people's lives. Mr. Bow. <clears throat> um, property taxes in a couple of years raised, I think, 31% of the east side, um, which has a huge effect on affordable housing. Um, I don't know how they got to be that high in the first place or who made those decisions exactly, but um, taking a look at those books and seeing how we can decrease those would be definitely a priority for anybody who lives in the district. Um, okay, Mr. Bell, we'll start with you with this question. Your personal tools in finance. The Ramsey County budget for 2024-25 exceeds $800 million, and the number of employees in Ramsey County is approaching 4,000 employees. This boggles my mind because I don't know how anybody manages it, but what experience and what tools do you personally have to enable you to deal with this part of the job of being a Ramsey County Commissioner? Sure. Um, being a manager in a nonprofit, I have to write my own budgets for my department every year. Um, so that's allocating staff, um, resources we need for our food rescue truck, for example. Um, maintenance needs, questions, you know, we'll categorize and go down the line and see what we need and see what, what we have to raise and where our gaps are and where we can do. But I think right now, I think I'm managing a budget of like $250,000, give or take, depending on the depending on the donor. Um, so I do have experience with that. It's just um, numbers aren't my favorite thing, but I will do my best. Mr. McMurtry? Yes, I, I've had experience dealing with budgets. I've served on a number of different uh, boards uh, throughout our community uh, that have had hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, within their budgets that we've had to have really dis really tough discussions and real discussions on uh, how we ensure that we are uh, uh, paying our workers what they need and what they deserve, but also meeting the needs uh, of, of what the organization is about and what our community needs. And so that's the type of experience that I would bring uh, to the county board of having, having had that experience working working on, on, on different boards um, uh, and understanding how those budgets work, uh, but also just making sure that we have a clear understanding that we need to support our workers uh, in our community and in, in the county uh, to ensure that they're getting the resources that they need to help provide for the resources and services that they provide to the people throughout our community. Okay, and Mr. McMurtry, uh, this next one is for you as well. Um, in Ramsey County, there has been some significant turnover in the top administrative positions. Human resources has not always reached out to the public or to the constituencies in choosing individuals for some of these top positions. For example, there was never any public forum on a new library director. What would you do to address the turnover in top administration and to more involve the public in human resources decisions. 
Yeah, I, I, I believe that right now uh, the county is in the midst of a transition. We have a new county manager uh, who, who just got selected into this role, and I would want to work closely with her to really look at uh, the issues and the challenges that, that the county is facing when it comes to staffing, not only in those higher uh, roles, but a lot of the other roles uh, for staff that we've seen people uh, express uh, the, the need for, for better pay, better benefits. We're losing a lot of our uh, staff uh, to other counties because uh, we're not not meeting some of their needs and so I wouldn't want to make sure that I'm having these conversations with the county manager and then of course when it comes to those larger roles and uh, ensuring that we are incorporating the voices of the community uh, so we get a sense of, of where, where they stand uh, any questions or concerns that they have uh, but ultimately I think that we need to be working uh, as a county level uh, to, to make sure we're getting our workers the pay and the benefits that they need Mr. Bow. <clears throat> I agree that pay and benefits are definitely a huge part of the, the problem. Um, as people you know, look at other municipalities that are closer or uh, in a ge geographic location that's easy for them to commute to, um, so Minneapolis, for example. Um, I would also want to see how with the top, with top positions and how we get more public forums, and I think we have more debates like this. We have more open and honest communications with the who people, who are the candidates, and what's going on. More accountability and more transparency and can all, is always better, in my opinion. Mr. Bow, this one is for you. It seems to me that there is a real difficulty in trying to balance maintaining low taxes and enhancing services to our community. Everybody wants lower taxes and everyone wants better services. What will you do as a Ramsey County Commissioner? I would take a hard look at how we would be able to achieve that and how, what other cities and municipalities have been able to achieve that. Um, lots of larger cities have difficulties with, I mean, I used to live in, in Oregon for a minute, and um, Portland is a good example of how the things can run amok very, really quickly. There's so many um, services that are provided, but there's no, no way to pay for it. So finding creative ways to uh, get that, those dollars in, the, in before we actually spend them is important. Mr. McMurtry? Yes, on the, on the taxes front, uh, as I've mentioned before, I, I would work uh, closely with our partners to ensure that we're diversifying our revenue stream uh, so that we can, uh, so we, we won't have to have the burden solely on property taxes. When it comes to our services, I, I think it's important for us to, to work directly with the departments and the staff that's providing these services uh, and ensuring that we're understanding from them what's working and what's not. What are ways that we can better streamline processes? What are different redundancies when it comes to procedures? Uh, that we may be able to get rid of to help them do their job even better. How can we modernize technology uh, uh, for, the, for the county to make sure that we are providing the best services that we can uh, to our community? And so I would work uh, hand in hand with uh, our department leads uh, as well as the county manager uh, to figure out how we can go about doing that and continue to provide great services to the people of the county. Okay. I lost track. I apologize. Bad, bad, bad moderator here. Mr. Okay. Bow, did you answer that question earlier? Okay. Then this is back to Mr. McMurtry. And I apologize. Um, downtown issues. Unhoused population and open drug use have been a topic among others and those who work down among visitors and those who work downtown. How would you start addressing these issues? The, the topic of our unhoused is really important, uh, and I think first and foremost, we have to start with the mindset that these are our neighbors. Uh, these are people who are, are having a very, very tough time, and I think it's important for us as a county uh, to do our part uh, to provide them with the resources and the services that they need uh, to lead them towards safe and secure uh, and, and, st and stable permanent housing. Uh, and so I think that the solution when it comes to, to the unhoused in our community is kind of multi-pronged. Uh, we have to look at ensuring that we have shelter programs that have rapid response measures uh, and those wraparound services to help folks who's dealing with chemical dependency, who may need a job, who have all these other uh, 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 challenges that we can help them with. And on top of that, we need to look at, as a county, the rental assistance program that we have on top of ensuring that we're investing more in deeply affordable housing housing to ensure that everyone in the county has a pathway uh, to stable and permanent housing. Mr. Bell. 
Sure. Um, so these are the people that I work with every day. Um, we, I work with the homeless a lot um, in trying to figure out how to get people into programs is difficult too because lots of times people don't want to get into programs. Um, so affordable housing, sustainable help, um, not just getting people into a shelter situation, but getting them mental health services, getting them um, a job training, for example, um, uh, down payment assistance, things like that. So these wraparound services that a lot of communities provide. Um, I think the, a lot of nonprofits see themselves as like the edge of a pool when you're learning how to swim. They're just there for support until you're ready to go. And we haven't done a good job of doing that. We're, all, we're the land of 10,000 nonprofits. There's so many of us doing really good work, but we're all doing it kind of competing with each other for, for a small amount of money. So we need to figure out how to collaborate more and work together. Okay, Mr. Bao, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has made county health statistics available, which show that Ramsey County has the lowest child health results. What will you do to increase positive child outcomes? I think early childhood education is very important for that. Um, food um, security, I mean, is, is a huge problem. There are so many f kids that go to bed hungry in this, in this county, and that shouldn't happen. Um, they shouldn't have to depend on the hours of a food shelf to be able to feed themselves. So figuring how to do that, you know, and I think the lunch program is a, is a, good, is a good start, but we got to figure out how to pay for that long term. Mr. McMurtry? Absolutely. I, I first you know, want to definitely applaud the work that we've seen done uh, at the state legislature on the last couple of, of sessions uh, addressing uh, child poverty in our community and, and providing the, uh, the free lunch for, for students. I think that we need to make sure that all the different things that were passed at the state level that we're doing our best as a county to administer those things on our level. But uh, one, one topic that I, I think is really important to, to the success of our, of our youth and, and, and their safety is housing. Uh, no child should ever have to be afraid or, or, or fear of where they're going to lay their head at the end of the night. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we are addressing the 15,000 deeply affordable housing deficit that we have in the county uh, and prioritizing that uh, to make sure that everyone in, in our community has a place uh, to, to call home. Okay. Mr. McMurtry, next question. Child care. We are talking about children. Child care is important so that families can maintain employment and achieve economic prosperity, or at least economic stability. A license for home-based child care requires an applicant in Ramsey County to pay fees for the license and fees for a background study. It requires training and compliance with many other requirements. How can Ramsey County make child care more accessible safe and affordable. I think it's, it's so important when it comes to child care that we are working directly with the families who we're knowing are, are being most impacted by this uh, and, and, and ensuring that they have uh, the services and the resources that they need. I, I think it's, it's crucial that we understand where the gaps are currently uh, uh, with child care so we can be strategic and targeted in our solutions uh, and to make sure that they're done so in an equitable way. Uh, you know, especially in, in, in Ramsey County, being, it being so diverse, uh, we have so many opportunities uh, uh, for child care that's, uh, uh, that's, well, that's outside of the, the, the more conventional means. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we are working hand in hand uh, with those child care providers that are working hand in hand with the city uh, to make sure that we're understanding where those gaps are and how we can better fill them as a county. How about you, Mr. Bow? Um, <clears throat> my neighbors run on child care um, and they're constantly trying to find staff. Um, because it's hard for them to uh, be competitive with pay. So finding a way to subsidize that to get people better pay, better benefits, so they stay in those positions and so they can actually have their capacities for their actual daycare sites, because a lot of those sites aren't at capacity because they don't have enough staff. So figuring that out. Mr. Bow, we've talked a lot about trying to create programs that are affordable, um, other than property tax revenues, what are some other tools that Ramsey County commissioners can use? Um, we could increase the corporate tax rate for some of the places that are in our community. I know it's not necessarily a popular idea, but um, 
these large corporations that are um, using our space and providing you know, jobs and all kinds of things to us also should be able to pay their fair share as well. Mr. McMurtry? Yes, I, and I, I mentioned this before, but I think that we have a real opportunity in downtown St. Paul. Um, I, I, I truly believe that when we're looking at the current makeup of downtown St. Paul, we have government buildings, we have uh, uh, faith-based organizations, we have uh, um, uh, schools, and none of them are being taxed. And so I think that we have to really look at ways of diversifying our uh, revenue stream there and ensuring that we're working with organizations uh, like Greater MSP, like uh, um, uh, with our city and with our state leaders uh, to ensure we're recruiting and bringing in uh, different businesses and, and, and industries to help diversify that. I also think that it's really important that we are, are continuing to support and invest in our small businesses and, and the impact that they can have on building community wealth uh, within our community. And one of the things that I want to do uh, is start a small business advisory council within our community uh, to ensure we're understanding the needs uh, of our small businesses and how, as a county, we can be a better partner. Okay, Mr. McMurtry, new question, private investment. How will you ensure that Ramsey County is utilizing private investment for public good? I think there's an absolute opportunity for private investment. You know, I, I have experience working in the private sector, uh, having worked at Target, uh, and my job at Target was centered around working with stakeholders across the country to figure out ways uh, that Target could show up as a good community partner. Um, I think that it is important for us uh, to not only hold uh, uh, these private investments uh, uh, accountable, uh, but also to make sure that they are adhering and, and upholding the needs of the folks in the community. Everything that we're doing what, if, it is, if, if it involves uh, private pub, public sector uh, partnerships should be centered around uh, the community. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we are uh, utilizing those relationships to invest in things the community needs, affordable housing, transportation, uh, making sure that we're uh, in, investing in, in our smaller businesses as well, and, and a workforce to ensure that they're getting the training that they need to, uh, to, to, to take on these jobs of the future. So that's how I would try to uh, make sure that we are collaborating and working with both the private sector and the public sector. Mr. Bow, for you, how will you ensure that Ramsey County is utilizing private investment for public good? Well, I would uh, ensure that they are actually being good partners with the communities that they're investing in and not just looking for a photo op. Um, people in these communities need real help and they shouldn't be used as, uh, as uh, devices for other gains. Okay, Mr. Bow, I'll move on to some safety issues. Domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking continue to plague many of our nation's communities, including Ramsey County. Immigrant women, LGBT victims, communities of color, and Native women face particular challenges. What would you do to ensure that all victims of violence receive protection and the services they need? I think we need an overhaul in our mental health professional structures. We just can't call the police for everything. Um, it, a lot of people you know, that I work these vulnerable populations, they're afraid to go to the police because they think that they'll get their partner in trouble or vice versa. And other communities just don't think they have a voice and the police won't listen to them. Um, ensuring that there's a mental health segment of the, of the St. Paul Police Department would be um, fantastic to actually establish and have fully funded. <clears throat> Mr. McMurtry? Right, so the, the important role that, that we play as a county is that we, uh, we, we, we vote on the, the county sheriff's budget. Uh, I think when it comes to public safety as a whole, we need to work uh, with uh, the county sheriff to make sure that they are working on ideas and solutions that meet the needs of the community. Uh, I don't think that we need to focus on uh, uh, over-policing our neighborhoods, because we know that that's something that's prevalent throughout many neighborhoods in our community. Uh, so I want to ensure that we're looking at ways beyond police to address the public safety uh, challenges that we face. I think there's an opportunity in the county. There's uh, one a program that they have, the Appropriate Responses Initiative, uh, that I would like to make sure we're rolling out in St. Paul uh, that ensures that instead of sending an armed law enforcement officer to certain calls, they'd send up another appropriate response, whether it be a mental health professional or a social worker. We need to make sure that those type of programs are being fully funded and expanded uh, throughout the county. Well, that leads me to my next question, Mr. McMurtry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
There has been tension between the Ramsey County Board and the Ramsey Sheriff regarding budgeting. The sheriff is elected by the citizenry, but the budget is controlled by Ramsey County, by the Board of Commissioners. What can you do to work with the office to provide safety and justice within the confines of the budget? I would absolutely want to work uh, with the, the, the county sheriff. Um, I think looking at the budget uh, and specifically looking at areas uh, that we uh, know can, can see some improvement or that are, are not really needed uh, is something that I would want to have a conversation with the, the, the county sheriff on. Uh, but as I mentioned, I think one thing that I would want to share with the, with the sheriff is that when we're looking at public safety as a community, it's more than just policing. Public safety is making sure that we have affordable housing for folks in our our community. Public safety means that we are having uh, a workforce that's fully trained not only for the jobs of today but for the jobs of tomorrow. I think we need to be looking well beyond just law enforcement and I would want to have those conversations with uh, the county sheriff to ensure that we are providing safety to our communities but we're doing so with the community a part of those conversations and not just uh, uh, happening with the same folks around the table. Mr. Bow. Um, I would definitely want to work with the sheriff to see what is essential, what needs to be done, um, to see how public safety can also be about public equity. Um, just having armed responses to things is, isn't enough. Um, being an Eastside resident, I see the police quite often um, and have pretty good relationships with some officers that uh, are around, but not everybody has that. Not everybody feels comfortable talking to a police officer. We need to find a way to have more meet and greets, like National Night Out, where the police officers actually get to be, come into the community and meet people. It'd be even greater if some of the officers actually lived in the communities that they policed. I think they would police it very differently. Well, another public safety question that relates to the geographic outline of this district. Most of the district is within the city of St. Paul and the patrol function is by the St. Paul Police Department, not the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, and not the Ramsey County Sheriff. There's a small section of this district that is in the city of Falcon Heights and not in St. Paul. Um, with this geographic hodgepodge, how can you address public safety issues effectively when the police force is the city police force. Who's first? That was Mr. Bow to go first. Okay. Um, I would like to find a way to consolidate Falcon Heights into the same police force, because um, that's that they've had issues over the years, obviously, with um, tragedies, and um, we need to figure out a way to make that easier for the county to pay for it in a holistic way instead of hodgepodging together, as you said. Um, I think St. I think St. Paul Police Department does a pretty good job um, of getting to know the community and trying to be intentional about um, working with community and working with community partners to actually make the neighborhood safe. Yeah, I would want to work closely with uh, with with all the different uh, uh, agencies and departments. Uh, I think with St. Paul in particular, it's it's going to be uh, crucial that we we work hand in hand with him. I know that that's uh, a vast majority of of this district in particular. Uh, but I also want to make sure that we're understanding the areas and some of the best practices that we've seen throughout uh, uh, throughout these different departments to see how we can share ideas, we can share uh, some of the ways that we can improve public safety, uh, especially ensuring that the public safety is community-centered. I think that there are a number of good things that the St. Paul Police Department has done uh, to invest more in, in community-centered, community-first public safety. And so I would, I believe that an important aspect of the role of county commissioner is convening. And so I would want to get together uh, with these different partners to ensure that we're understanding how we can provide the best public safety for the folks of our community. Okay. Mr. McMurtry, the next question something a little happier. How about parks and recreation? What would you do as a commissioner to maintain and improve our wonderful county parks? 
Yeah, I, I think that our parks are, are absolutely amazing. Ramsey County is very unique because uh, we have one of the largest open space park systems of a county of our size uh, in the country. And I think that that's important for us uh, to make sure we maintain that. Uh, I want to see uh, more parks to be uh, established and built throughout our communities, across our community, especially in communities that we know uh, that are, are seeing that neglect. It, it, it pays uh, such an important role uh, in and not only the, uh, um, uh, the success of our communities, but also it's an environmental uh, impact that it has on our communities. Uh, so I would want to make sure that we are uh, working hand in hand with community partners uh, to, to determine ways that we can enhance uh, the work of our parks and, and recreation team uh, for the betterment of, of folks who live here. Mr. Bow. <clears throat> um, I love our parks. I spend a lot of time in them. And I would have more festivals, um, more uh, we the east side has the you know the fall harvest festival um that's one of my favorite events every year but getting all of our community partners out to spend time in the community so people can get to know the other organizations around i think that's one really important thing and being uh relaxing some laws around um distributing different kinds of food and uh that people other vendors make on the street corners and things like that i think has gotten a pass in some places, and I think it's a good thing because um, more food in the neighborhood is always always a delightful sight. I'm going to ask the timers to let me know because I don't have a clock up here when we should start closing remarks. Could you let us know at that time? Okay, so we have eight o'clock. So I think that. It was timely for me to ask that question. How did I know? <laughs> All right. Well, um, now we have a chance for closing remarks. And this time we will let Mr. Bow go first and then Mr. McMurtry. You have two minutes to give your closing statement. Um, but before you do so, I would like to thank you for the congeniality that you have both shown. We live in a time where there are a lot of disputes, anger, um, not the compatibility or the purposeful um, working together that you have both exhibited. So thank you very much for that. And also thank you to our audience for the great questions that you've put forward. If I didn't get to your question, I apologize. I'm juggling quite a few things all at once and trying to make sense of it. Um, so why don't we start with our closing statements. Mr. Bao first. Well, once again, thank you very much for having me here tonight. It was an honor. It's the first time I got to meet uh, Garrison, and it was a delight. Um, after seeing his bio and things like that, I, after I decided to file for candidacy, I realized that no matter who wins, St. Paul wins. So that's great. So having that congeniality was, was a pleasure. It was a pleasure being up here with you tonight. Um, and I hope we get to spend more time together until February. So that'll be interesting. Um, since this is a special election, uh, it's February 11th, and that'll be a very cold, very nice day, because I love the winter. So I'm looking forward to the nice set into fall and looking forward to more of these. Mr. McMurtry? Great, no, thanks again to the League of Women Voters for putting this forum on, and thanks to Joshua. I'm, I'm so happy to be on, on the stage with you and that we get an opportunity to share our visions uh, and our backgrounds uh, for this community. Uh, once again, I'm Garrison McMurtry. I'm proud to be the DFL and Labor endorsed candidate uh, in this race. Uh, our election is in February, uh, February 11th, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I love this community. Uh, I believe so, so firmly in the possibilities of this community. Uh, and I'm here because I really want to center economic justice uh, in the work that we're doing in this community. Uh, I feel so uh, strongly that the, the work that is, that is ahead of us, we have a true opportunity as, as a county. We're in the midst of transition. We're losing three county commissioners. Uh, and so it's bittersweet, but I think it also brings the real opportunity for new fresh bloods, for, for new uh, perspectives and lived experiences, and that's something that I want to bring uh, to this role. Uh, I, I truly believe that as we look at the county as a 
whole, uh, we have a true opportunity to not only build the, the county that we want to see for the next 10 to 15 years, but I want to put in the work to ensure that we're building the county that we want to see for the next 100 years. And so I'm excited about, uh, about this work ahead and excited to get a chance to get out there and talk to more uh, voters about my vision for economic justice uh, and ensuring that we are truly building a community for future generations. Thank you so much. So to close, I would like to say a special thanks to all the people working with the St. Paul Neighborhood Network for making this forum possible. Thank you very much to the St. Paul League of Women Voters for all the work that they have put in to make this possible. Thank you to the candidates for showing up. And thank you very much for every citizen who is taking the time and has the interest to listen to this forum. Citizenry is what it's all about. So we have a lot of people to thank and to encourage. That's it for tonight. Good night. Let's see.